Well, when Delhi arrives in New Delhi, uh, he's got to face his worst fear going into the American embassy. Got to renew his passport. <sighs> he spiritually uh, gets him re ready for what could happen. First, deny him a new passport, but worse, handcuff him, arrest him on the spot, deport him to the United States to face junk charges there. <sighs> well, he goes into the embassy, fills out the paperwork. Nothing much happens. Uh, huh. Uh, they give him a brand new American passport. Seems the world's maybe losing interest in Eddie, or just papers got lost in the shuffle. At Interpol in Europe, uh, no computers at this time, <laughs> you know. Um, no telephones, no televisions. I mean, if you need to send a message to your people, you had to send a telegram. Overseas, <laughs> they used to call it. Uh, and pocket calculators. Well, you just had to add, add up stuff in your head. Uh, <sighs> wow, shake that off. Uh, Eddie, since he's in the capital, uh, he follows up on the enlightened master guru idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, gets an appointment with a government minister, the son of a philosopher, Radna Krishna, and he explains to the diplomat, uh, My friends in Bombay think I'm enlightened. Um, and they'd like to make me their guru, and we can form an ashram here in India. <laughs> Radna Krishna replies, I am enlightened too, but I don't want to have an ashram in India. Look, if you want to have an ashram, go to America, build your ashram over there. Well, you gotta give freaks credit. Uh, freaks credit. They, they run any possibility into the ground. <laughs> and Eddie, whoops, had the briefest stint of a guru in India. Well, it took him 27 hours to get from Bombay to Delhi. That's about it, huh, for him. So Eddie takes uh, a motor rickshaw to Old Delhi, to the Crown Hotel, and wow, he's amazed. Uh, it's got uh, old beatniks there like himself. What are they doing? Oh, they're reading uh, the Upanishads, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, deep into Eastern spirituality. And, whoa, what's that? Oh, ampules of liquid morphine? Give a pharmacist a few rupees, and uh, <laughs> you can get anything you want in Old Delhi. Yeah. Well, uh, during his Delhi trip, Eddie laid two ghosts to rest. Uh, two heavy bags he's been carrying in his head. Throw those out the train window. One, our Americans aren't interested in him at all. And he's not a guru. <sighs> yeah. So he heads for the Himalayan mountains. First up, Benares, the houseboats of Benares, and then up Padna, rocks off to Kathmandu. Mm. What's that, goddess? Mm -hmm. You'd like to have me weave some of my uh, trip in India into the story at this time? You've heard quite a bit about Eddie. Oh, sure. Uh, well, at this time, I, Earthman, am 61 years old. The year's 2008, late December. Well, let's talk about old India heads like myself. Many of us uh, now in our 60s simply yearn to reside in India for the rest of our lives. Golden years residing deep in Indian wisdom like uh, go up to an ATM machine, put in your credit card, and out come crisp Indian rupees these days. But old timers? 
mostly don't reside in Goa anymore. Yeah, hippie ship, shh, abandoned. Charter flights, mass trash tourism. <laughs> Pollution, hardcore police entrapment, and visa absurdities. Uh, have exterminated Goa freaks. Uh, we were rare birds to begin with. We're now extinct. Uh, I'm just saying, relatively few uh, searching, exploring Americans bother with India at all anymore. They prefer Southeast Asia. I'm talking Cambodia, Laos, Thailand, Indonesia, Bali. Uh, back in the old days, about 40% of the world travelers on the overland hippie trip were Americans, and we were known as the best. And the worst travelers. Compared to Scandinavians, they were so clean and organized and spoke 17 languages. <laughs> you know? So always seemed kind of cheerful and together, those Scandinavians. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, Southeast Asia, a lot closer to West Coast and uh, not nearly so trashed and visa crazy about India. How visa crazy? 